Hello, it's Ilkiston Web Design and welcome to this tutorial about how to clone a WordPress website to a local host. So, backing up WordPress. WordPress updates itself periodically. There'll be changes to plugins, to the WordPress software itself, to any frameworks that you're running. It's a little bit like iOS software on iPad or iPhone. It needs to be updated periodically. And I don't like to push those updates live to the live website. I like to test them first of all in a local host to make sure that there's no software incompatibilities. So the local host is like a sandbox. It's, a, it's an exact copy of your live website. And it's where I do testing and development if a client asks for changes to the code or they want to try out a new plugin. So we'll take the database and file directory from the live website and reproduce it in the local host using phpMyAdmin. Um, so WAMP server is what we're using for the local host. WAMP by default uses the URL local host and then there's a forward slash and then you choose a URL for the local installation. And it's good to use WAMP because if there's any problems or errors, you'll know about those in the sandbox, the local host, rather than pushing out a change to a live website and then having something unpredictable happen. So it's always a good idea, especially if it's big changes or if the website is turning over a lot of uh, business, you don't want to have disruption. WAMP server is free to download. It's a very good server stack. WAMP means Windows, Apache, MySQL, PHP. By default, WAMP is installed to C drive and inside C drive there's a folder called www. This is where your websites are contained. So you open a new folder and give it a name. In our case, it's small biz web tips or lowercase. And that's the folder into which the folders will be copied from the live server will be importing the database into PHP my admin later on. So install WAMP and start a new instance of WAMP. And WAMP, the, the icon has to be green. Ignore the part that says server offline, you can ignore that. The, the, the WAMP icon needs to be green for all services to be running. If you want to find out more about WAMP, smallbizgeek.co.uk slash WAMP. There's an installation guide there. So what you want to do is open up FTP, FileZilla's free, log into your, your remote server with your credentials, go to your top level uh, domain, your root folder, and copy everything from your remote server. I've set up a folder where I back up websites and blogs and I've created a folder called directory and I've dumped everything in here for now. So what you see is my remote server directory and I've just opened up wp-config which comes with WordPress and we're going to need to change the credentials so the database user is root, the password is blank and the host is localhost. They're the credentials that the local host version of PHP my admin users. I've left the database name as it is and you can get all your database credentials from your host. So log in to PHP my admin on your remote server. Choose the database that you want to back up. You might only have one database or you might have a few so make sure that you select the correct one in this case it's backup test 251 then go to export and make sure that all your tables are selected for that database make sure that sql is selected and check save as file your version of php my admin might be a bit different but in principle we're just downloading the sql file click go and save the SQL file to a, data, uh, to a folder of your choice. I've got a folder called database and I'm going to put a hyphen in there and append it with the words PHP my admin just so I know that this particular database was exported from PHP my admin because later on I'll be using the secure shell to log in to my Linux host via a command line interface and I prefer to use this version to download my databases because 
I think that it's a cleaner, better and far superior MySQL um, dump rather than using PHP my admin. So I've logged in and I've dumped my database using the command lines and by default if you use SSH, I'm using PuTTY, it's a free Windows terminal emulator for Linux servers, by default the SQL file is actually dumped into the user folder of your remote server. So it's not the public HTML folder where the actual website is. It's the folder above that. It's the, the user folder. So if you open up your remote server, you can grab the file and copy it across. Don't forget to delete the file from your remote server because you don't want to leave that sitting there. Okay, so we've got an SSH download and a PHP my admin download. Essentially, it's the same file. It's the database. So open up another instance of localhost, and let's have a look at the home screen. So you've got PHP info, you've got PHP my admin, you've got your projects here. That's the folder that we opened a minute ago. Small biz web tips. Do you remember in the www folder? That's the same. That's the project folder. And it's into this folder that we're going to set everything up. We're going to copy that directory. That's the contents of your remote server. We'll copy that into the www directory, small biz web tips, and that will all copy across. Check your WP config folder to see that the credentials are correct. Backup test 251 is the name of the database and we need that because we're now going to go into PHP my admin in WAMP in the local host and we're going to create a brand new database. So click new, go to database and type in the name of your database and click create. So now that database has been created but it's empty so we need to import something. We need to import the database dump that we created from SSH putty. So you can use PHP my admin if you want, but I find that you get import errors and all sorts of problems. Depends on what version of PHP my admin your remote server uses as compared to the PHP my admin in localhost. So import that. You can see it was imported successfully. No issues there whatsoever. That's always good. And now type localhost slash small biz web tips and hit enter and it should say not found that's because we need to in we need to uh, change all the internal urls because at the moment the database is referencing the remote server so if you were to uh, if you were to hover your mouse over one of these links in the local host if you look down on the bottom left can you see it still says small biz web tips you see it's trying to reference a remote server so what we need to do is we need to replace all the urls using this free script it's called search and replace database it's by a brand called interconnectit.com if you just go to google and search find and replace database interconnect it one of the top results that comes up in the search results should link directly to that script and yes you can download it so click the download button and download it i've already done that i've got it saved here in a in a, uh, a template some presets folder and it's zipped up so I'll copy that and I'll go back to my small biz web tips folder inside www inside the WAMP folder in C drive and I'll paste it and I'm going to extract it press OK so that's extracted that folder now you can delete the zip you don't need that and rename search replace DB master something simple SRDB okay so that's now says SRDB go back to your local host small biz web tips URL and on the end of that we're now going to say S R D B press enter click search replace data DB master yeah 
and now what we want to do is is swap one URL out for the other so we go into well first of all let's check that the credentials are correct database uh, yeah, user that's all correct those are the credentials according to WP config what we want to do now is is grab the remote URL and we're going to ask this script to search the database for all instances of www.smallbizwebtips.co.uk don't forget to put the trailing slash on the end very important and now we want to replace that remote URL with the local URL so all the URLs are going to get changed to localhost slash smallbizwebtips again trailing slash very important now you can do a dry run so if you click dry run this is a hypothetical test and it it will scan all the tables and rows and it will show you what will be changed if you decide to do the live run so click live run and it should take about two minutes to go through everything and actually change the URLs. Okay, so here we go. It's showing you that it's changed those cells and now smallbizwebtips.co.uk has been replaced with localhost slash smallbizwebtips. I suggest that you run the script a second time but this time take off the trailing slash and it's important that you do that because I know for a fact that there are still instances of the remote URL inside the database which haven't been changed. Can you see that smallbizwebtips.co.uk the script didn't get that one because we had the trailing slash on the end we want to do it again but without the trailing slash so do that and you'll see that can you see it there look it says localhost smallbizwebtips it's, it's done it okay so now back to localhost smallbizwebtips and type wp hyphen admin this is your login screen that comes with all wordpress installations i'm just using some basic credentials don't ever use admin on a remote server by the way it's okay for a testing server go to permalinks and we just want to flush the cache click the button that's already highlighted post name don't change anything just reselect the radio button and save changes and that should flush the cache which is important for internal links otherwise you might get some errors so that all appears to be working and it's showing as the home page which has the words this is a test and you can compare that to the remote version and it is the same and let's just open this image and see if it's yeah it's referencing local hosts which means all the internal links are working great so now we can delete that SRDB folder because we don't need that anymore and I suggest that you always go into your theme folder open up style dot CSS and do a search press something like control F and you can run a search and if there are any instances of the remote URL you'll know about it sometimes designers like to use a, a background CSS rule to reference an image and embed it into a CSS container this style sheet doesn't have any but if you do use the remote URL in your style sheet you're going to need to change those to the local host as well the script that we ran earlier that was designed for a MySQL database and that's the only thing that it scans um, so you're going to have to change any links manually in your style sheet so back to the local host here we go and now we can run those updates that we were talking about earlier on so there's a new version of WordPress for example we can run that safely in our local host and if there are any issues we'll know about it and we can do something about it instead of just going to the live version of the website clicking update and then finding out that something's gone wrong or something's not working as it should always a good idea to uh, 
to roll out those changes. And if you're running a business and you, you need your business website to be operational on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't want disruption. So we've got loads of plugins here that need to be updated. So we can press update on all of those and everything should be fine. What I do suggest is that you regularly update the WP content folder, not to mention the database. If you're adding new content to your live website, you want to keep making backups and um, make sure that the, the local host that you've got is always running a version of your site in parallel to your live website. And you want to keep your uploads folder up to date. You want to keep your plugins folder up to date. I'm talking about on the local host. So if anything ever happens to your live website, you've always got a backup which you can which is operational. So that's it. That's how you clone a live website to a local host. It seems like a lot of hassle to some people, but can you afford the downtime? Can you afford the disruption? I mean this is something that you can do at the weekends and you're future proofing your business website against any problems, any catastrophe and thanks for watching.